I really love and respect a lot of what Elon Musk has done with Twitter. He's trying to take it in the right direction, turning it into a free speech platform. I've been a vocal advocate of that. But I'm going to break a cardinal rule, an unspoken rule in the Republican Party these days and in the conservative movement by saying that, you know, if somebody's an actual hero and they're doing a certain thing, you can't criticize them when they do something wrong. That's Elon Musk. Apparently, according to the Chinese government, as of yesterday's reports, kowtowing to the Chinese Communist Party, presumably as a basis for gaining favorable market treatment there. Their foreign minister, China's foreign minister, yesterday reported publicly on a meeting that Elon had with Chinese officials in which he said that he doesn't support a decoupling from China, but instead called the U.S. and communist China conjoined twins, using his words, according to the Chinese officials. Now, maybe Elon doubted that characterization of the meeting, but turns out that Tesla's vice president in China posted the CCP's statement on Weibo, a Chinese social network in China, though they perhaps quite cleverly didn't post that here in the United States. I don't think it would have gone as well over here. Now we know that there's news reporting on what happened in that meeting. It's part of a continued and I think concerning pattern of a number of American CEOs, but even let's just stick to Elon in the case of Tesla. Last October, inexplicably, out of nowhere, no one's asking the CEO of an electric car maker to offer his opinion on this necessarily, or are they, saying that Taiwan should reunify with China. Said that last October, literally days later, actually gets a nice little attaboy pat on the back from the CCP when they give special tax benefits in Shanghai, only to follow up the next year of building a new factory for Tesla in Shanghai as well. It's not Elon's fault. Businesses and business leaders are going to do what businesses do, whatever allows them to make the most money for their businesses. But this is a problem that the U.S. actually needs to wake up to, and it's systemic. There's a bit of a mystery why U.S. businesses will consistently criticize the United States without saying a peep about China. Take the NBA. Remember when Daryl Morey, the general manager of the Houston Rockets, criticized, well, didn't even criticize China, just said that he stands with Hong Kong. The NBA and Nike and the Houston Rockets themselves immediately began apologizing for his tweet, daring to say, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. LeBron James criticized him as well. It's not just in sports. You see it everywhere. John Donahoe, the CEO of Nike, leading a company that will regularly criticize systemic racism here in the United States. But just last year or in the last year or so, says that we're a brand of China, for China, kowtowing to the CCP. Airbnb puts a neat little black square on its Instagram account, saying it stands with Black Lives Matter, saying that it will compensate its executives based on delivering stakeholder goals rather than shareholder goals. Yet its chief of privacy had to resign when it was revealed that they were handing over U.S. user data to the CCP as a condition for doing business in China when co-founder Nate Blacharczyk then reportedly said to that head of privacy that we're not here to promote American values. He's right about that, but it is the job of American leaders to promote American values to see that our companies are being played, turned into pawns by doing what the CCP wants them to do. How do they turn them into pawns? They say you don't get to enter the Chinese market, whether you're Tesla, whether you're Airbnb, whether you're BlackRock, whether you're the NBA, unless you do the CCP's political bidding, which includes, by the way, criticizing the United States while failing to criticize China. Rather, it's praising China and perhaps even, who would have ever thought, as silly as one of the most powerful tweeters in the world tweeting about Taiwan having to reunify with China as a preferred brokered peace plan. BlackRock's no different got to be the first seller of mutual fund products as a foreign owner of an asset management firm in China, notably only after, and the Wall Street Journal reported on this too, a few years ago, doing the lobbying of the Chinese government for lowered listing standards for Chinese companies here in the United States. This is pervasive. This is rampant. And it's intentional. I think part of the reason why China is now purposefully cozying up to the very people who are the icons of conservatives in the United States who otherwise 
are cautious about the U.S. relationship with China is that they know that's how you then actually take the legs out from under those people's arguments as well. Now, the conservatives in the U.S., what do they see? There's a conservatives love hero worship in the United States. They're worshiping their latest hero. I respect, by the way, a lot of what Elon Musk has done. I've been one of his biggest champions and proponents for what he's doing for the cause of free speech via trying to transform Twitter. But I think we can't fall into messiah complexes and have to see with clear eyes that it's the job of the U.S. to protect and the U.S. government to protect Americans from a national security and geopolitical perspective. And that means making sure that we don't allow our own companies to be turned, by the way, subsidized companies at that. <laughs> Think about the number of subsidies that American subsidies that flow to a company like Tesla or another electric car company to be turned into pawns for the CCP. How do they turn them into pawns? Because their private shareholders and their owners get to benefit from entering the Chinese market. But the rest of America is left actually holding the bag as the proprietors of those firms are spouting off Chinese talking points and actually tilting the scales of deep diplomatic discourse and geopolitical negotiations on matters like whether or not Taiwan becomes part of China. So I know that's heresy in today's Republican Party. I know you're supposed to cozy up to the people that allow you to do Twitter spaces that launch your presidential campaigns or whatever, get big donations. I think it's just important for us to speak truth. Whether or not that's the winning strategy, we'll find out. But truth is what we need to actually embrace in our party and stand for actual principles regardless of who's on the right side or wrong side. And though I respect what Musk does for free speech, I don't think what he's doing with respect to China is particularly helpful for American interests. And I'm going to call it out.